picture, this is a fluorescent angiogram. So you inject some fluorescent dye into somebody's arm, and then you take fluorescent pictures of their retina. And this is an early phase. This is an arterial phase of that. But then later, in the arterial phase, you see where that drusen was. You see this blush here. And what this blush is, is neovascularity. This is under, this is in the middle layers of the retina. This is, and this is what Western medicine is worried about. The macular degeneration, if it progresses far enough, becomes what's called exudative macular degeneration. The kind of uh, layman's term for that is dry macular degeneration, wet macular degeneration. So if you have a disease long enough, eventually it gets to a point where it's not just the neuroepithelial cells that are affected. All of the structures of the retina start breaking down, including the connective tissues and the vessels. And eventually, um, you get poor circulation. And when you have poor circulation, the body doesn't like poor circulation to an area. So it starts dilating capillaries. And eventually, it starts trying to grow new vessels into the area. And so you get this blush of abnormal new vessels. And eventually, the, the Western medicine is interested in this because it knows that this is where the eye is going to bleed eventually. And so when you read about therapies, when you read about treatments for macular degeneration, what you're reading about is the 10% of people, about 10% of people with macular degeneration will eventually bleed. And that's a lifetime thing from the time you're diagnosed till the time you die, 10% of those people will bleed. And that's a very serious complication. Bleeding is quite destructive to the retina. And all of the therapies are aimed at trying to destroy these vessels. So starting with uh, hot lasers, you would basically just burn a big hole in the retina here because that would, it's, it's sort of like taking a diabetic who's got a bleeding ulcer on their leg and cauterizing it with a hot poker. It's pretty crude, but it works. And so they would burn big holes in the retina and that would leave you with a big blind spot, but it would destroy these vessels. Uh, hot lasers turned out to be not such a good idea because at the margin of where you would burn things, there was so much destruction that 10, 15 years down the road, you would bleed from there. And so it, as you followed these people, the people who had hot laser treatments, full thickness burns to treat their neovascularity, well, that uh, led to an increased risk of bleeding further down the road. Then they developed uh, Visudine therapy, which is basically a... Uh, a photoreactive dye, Visudine's a drug, you inject that into the eye, and then you expose a very specific color laser, and the combination of that drug and that color laser, only where the two meet do you get destruction. And so you would hit that laser here, and it would cause, it would burn just the vessels that contained. And that was uh, thought to be pretty good too, but then it turns out that people are more prone to bleed that had that. So now the current therapy is taking uh, an adaptation of a drug that's used uh, to treat this neovascularity in cancers, Avastin. Um, and they've basically uh, taken that drug and gotten it approved for treatment of the eye. Same drug from Genentech relabeled it. And so now instead of costing Avastin at $25 a dose, you get Lucentis at $3,000 a dose for a monthly injection. And again, the whole point is to try and uh, destroy or prevent the formation of these vessels that are going to form bleeding. So none of these therapies that I've just described, which are all the things you read, you know, all the press that you're seeing, the headlines on ARMD and treatments for macular degeneration, none of those therapies were ever designed to improve vision. None of those therapies were ever designed to treat the underlying cause of the disease. Um, they're simply trying to treat this particular symptom here. And so that's why I show this slide. So, and if you read the uh, informed consents that people sign if they're going to get a needle full of uh, drug uh, injected into their eye, uh, what you, you know, what's made very clear to the patient is this is not being done to improve your vision. This is being done to treat this complication. And unfortunately, the only thing new about Avastin and Lucentis is that they're injecting it directly into the area. A lot of work has been done in the past with giving intravenous and oral forms of these drugs, and they've had limited success. And the, even in the, just the couple years that this has been done, it looks like...